Just on Mount Herbert Community Board, Paula Smith. Morena o te hapore o ohina haurawa koahu pātiki. Hello from Littleton Mount Herbert Community Board. I don't envy you this Rubik's Cube of a decision. Mm. <laughs> I just want to talk briefly about the process that we arrived at our submission, which I'm sure you will read. I'm not going to bore you by picking things out of it. But um, uh, there was those couple of defining your community meetings, which were quite well attended in our, in our um, uh, community. Um, the key message that came out of those was, yes, keep the peninsula intact. This had always been a board objective and um, continues to be so. <laughs> um, but, and, and initially, the board accepted the thesis that having equal numbers within all the wards was a fairer situation. And we worked hard to, um, to make, to, to uh, kind of enable that, you know, to, to accept that proposition. Um, and then we thought about which bits of Christchurch would best fit with Banks Peninsula at a board workshop. Once the initial proposal was out, Littleton Mount Herbert Community Board hosted um, some drop-in sessions at Governors Bay and Littleton and Diamond Harbour to discuss um, what, what we, we drafted our initial, uh, our position on the initial proposal to discuss that. And it was after these that there was a bit of, sh of shift in the board's thinking. Um, members began to, began to see that what was gained in fairness was being lost in effectiveness. Um, when we, when we reread our, our, uh, the Littleton Mount Herbert Community Board's submission to the previous review, which is attached to our submission, we, be, we began to think, well, well, actually, what has changed? And, and not, not that much had. Uh, I think that fairness is not just about equal numbers. It's about... Um, it's also really about how easy it is for people to participate in decision making, not just formally, but at all the multiple informal ways that you all know happen um, when you're an elected member. So um, hence our submission. Uh, I just want to say that it's now nearly 10 years since amalgamation. And from time to time, we still get a sense that there is some residual resentment in the city about the way Banks Peninsula was foisted on the city. Um, but I just want to say that we belong, we want to belong to the city and we want you to, the city to feel that Banks Peninsula belongs and um, yes, Banks Peninsula is distinct but I take the view that all the separate communities in Christchurch are distinct and we should, while celebrating those differences, should also all be um, part of one big whole. So questions please. Right. Um, Phil and then Yanni. Thank you. Um, so I just want to ask you um, a bit about the, the possibility of, for example, if council recommend that um, the peninsula is, remains as one ward, how um, having, would it be possible for one community board with subdivisions to actually work. I just like your sort of view on that, Paula. My view is that I think it would, but it's not something that I can speak for the board on. Thank you. And the the other question, well, it was really if you might elaborate about your comment about fairness and people participating in decision making. Because clearly, and, and you say that and make that point in your submission too, about how the Act doesn't require fair representation if it prevents effective representation. I asked the, that question of uh, Akira Wairiwa too, but I'm just wondering if you could elaborate on, on that, okay, that, that so part of the Act. In a community like ours, with the small population that we have and the number of community board members in particular, there are, we are able to enjoy. I mean, citizens are able to enjoy almost personal relationships, or you know, quite, they have, they feel close, they feel co in contact. I don't know whether that's the same in town. It's very hard for me to judge. But um, if we go down, if the if the initial proposal is is adopted, and we go down to two community board members where there are currently five, 
there's no way those community board members are going to be able to get around to all the residents association meetings and the various water meetings. I mean, it, it's, it, yeah, but I think if, if the peninsula was a single, well, it is a single ward, but if it was a, a, perhaps had a single community board, well, the same situation would arise because there would be fewer, fewer elected members to do all that work. So, so in fact, when it was, if it's boiled down, um, having one community board would pre uh, would prevent some challenges or even difficulties I think for would. the people. Mm. Yeah, I think it would. Mm. Thanks. You know, the way the way the the geography of the peninsula is that these these two big basins and then these barriers between them and yeah. Okay. Thank you, Paula. Yanni. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you for your submission. I'm just. I'm trying to understand the argument that we would make if we kept the peninsula as an isolated community. I can understand it from an Akaroa point of view, or possibly for Little River, um, but I struggle to understand in terms of the arguments for Littleton when it's quicker to get from Littleton to the council than it is from Scarborough or Sumner or other places maybe to the north of the city. So is there anything unique about the Littleton situation that would mean that you know, it should be treated as an isolated community, and if so, what's the what's the kind of arguments for that to occur? Uh, when the earthquakes happened, Littleton was cut off for quite a few weeks. We've got the tunnel, which is vulnerable, one point. We've still got a situation where, I say there's three points you can get to, three or four places that you can get to Littleton. The tunnel, there was the Sumner Road, that's still closed, so that remains a point, and then Dyer's Pass and Gibby's Pass. I mean, potentially, it, it can get cut off. It is, you know, there is a the risk of that happening. That's all I can think of at the moment, but I know there's right. some other reasons. Okay. <laughs> and, and the other concern that has been raised, if we extend the ward into taking account of Sumner or some of those Bays communities, is that those areas will have councils elected for the entire peninsula, and that, that, that's seen as unfair. But if you look at the recent history of the, since the amalgamation, the Littleton Mount Herbert area has always had the councillor that hasn't had anyone from Akaroa. So do you think it's a fair reason, if we were going to extend the boundary, to take into consideration that, that the population differences in terms of Littleton and Sumner compared to, say, Akaroa. So what are you saying is that it's most likely that the councillor will be elected from the city the side of the Port Mount, Hills? Mount Herbert, because of the population dynamic that currently exists, which seems to be the argument that we shouldn't extend into Sumner because that will have even less chance of a local councillor being represented for the Akaroa area. I think I understand your question, yeah. What can you do? Doesn't it happen everywhere? Well, but I mean, I think if you look at our initial proposal, the idea is to get more local wards to reflect the engagement that, that we've had from people. So in terms of that fair and effective representation, yeah, that's why I'm interested in the little term. Um, so can I just, I'm not, still not quite sure I understand your question. Um, so, Akaroa Wairewa are saying that it's unlikely that they'll ever get a councillor from their ward if, this, if, if the Banks Peninsula ward gets extended to include the Port Hills communities, yes, they then will. it's increasingly unlikely that Akaroa yeah. Wairewa will ever get a city councillor. They, they were worried that if we extend into Sumner, yes. the Banks Peninsula ward, that Sumner would determine who the councillor is for that area because of the population. Yeah, right. shared yes. numbers. That, so that seems more, the likelihood is that mm. that would be the case. I'm just trying to understand how valid, how valid that consideration is, given that under the current system, it's the Littleton community that determines who the council will be anyway because of the population dynamic that currently exists. Because, Sorry, what, what, what because was the quick? number of votes in Littleton out outweighs the number of votes in any other part of Banks Peninsula, is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, we have had a councillor from Diamond Harbour and the population on the south southern bays is about equal to L Littleton at the moment. Um, and the population in Akaroa Wairiwa subdivision is about equal to Littleton too. 
I mean, obviously the probability is that, that the councillor for an enlarged Banks Peninsula ward would come from Mount Pleasant or somewhere on that side of the Port Hills. Am I still understanding your question, do you think? Yeah, I mean, so the argument is, is that the Littleton Mount Herbert ward yes. um, should not be extended into Sumner because that will reduce its effectiveness in terms of representation because that council might come from somewhere, but that still means that Akaroa, for example, because of the population, would, would have less chance of having a council? Well, it reduces the probability that somebody from the Littleton Harbour Basin will be elected, and it reduces further the probability that somebody from Akaroa Wairiwa would be elected. Okay. Is that what you were getting at? Yeah, I'm just trying to understand the arguments that if we have to put forward that we retain the peninsula as a, as a whole, the threat of a councillor coming from an area not within that, that, that existing ward, given the current situation. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, 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 you know, the, the Banks Peninsula component is what's driving a lot of the debate that we're having. So, yes. um, and the question, I guess, is around whether we should be just focused on the um, on Banks Peninsula as a total, or whether we should think of Akaroa Wai Rewa as requiring something in terms of a separate community board, does that actually extend to, to Littleton, um, Mount Herbert? Could that possibly be a community board that joins, or part of a community board that joins another ward? So I suppose... Um, well, uh, can I just be very clear that people in Littleton would be strongly opposed to being separated from Banks Peninsula and that is the, that is the basis of our argument is that Banks Peninsula as it is now must, must stay intact. But, that, but, but we may not have that choice. So if we don't have that choice, we're just looking at all other options. So the proposal that we've put out there is to um, bring it together with Sumner um, in order to make up population yeah, numbers. Yeah, I understand that. And we were okay about that initially because it did keep Banks Peninsula intact. Right, so anything that, that, so if the proposal was that there'd be a separate Banks Peninsula board, but that in fact the, um, the separate community board didn't connect with, you know, your community board didn't connect with the, uh, across the hill. I mean, if your community board were to connect with another ward, if we were able to retain Banks Peninsula, but you, but you not. Uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> so you'd rather have it that you'd, you'd rather have it that if that happened, you'd rather stay with the Sumner ward being included, Sumner being included with the whole Banks Peninsula ward. The message we get from the residents of Banks Peninsula is they would rather stay with Akarawarua. Yes, but if that's not an option, is it better to make the whole ward? inclusive of Sumner or to allow your community board to join another another councillor's ward area. If you see what I mean, what I'm trying to say is, is that we could have we could have a Banks Peninsula ward which includes Akaroa Wairewa mm. and includes Littleton Mount Herbert. So the ward is the ward, but the community board might join with another ward so your councillor would be represented on the community board, but you would have Say two, three or, three, community board two members or three members on a, on a on ward a that was board on the that, other side of the hill. That was like the Hagley Littleton community board or something. Well, so, it, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Just the same where other community boards are doubled with two, yeah. two or three wards of making up a community board. Be yeah. Saying. yeah, so that, that's the question, is, is that... I mean, we're, 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 in many respects, we're looking for fallback positions on something yeah, no, that I we don't that. know. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that people would be that comfortable about that possibility. So you'd rather stay with a Sumner Banks Peninsula ward than to break your community board, even though that would give you a broken community board anyway. You see what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm, I'm just, anyway. We'll, so obviously we'll, not. Then we'll play around. We'll play around with, the, yeah. with, the, with the options. Um, Andrew, maybe I can put a couple of questions that have been asked a slightly different way. If the Littleton Mount Herbert Community Board were not able to maintain the status quo, 
would the Littleton Mount Herbert community population prefer to amalgamate with the Akaro Wairewa Community Board to form a Banks Peninsula Community Board or to amalgamate with the existing Ferrymead area to form a Littleton Ferrymead Community Board? My instinct is that, the, that they would rather amalgamate with the Akaro Wairewa Community Board and keep Banks Peninsula intact. Thank you. <coughs> and to come back to the question that Yanni was raising around isolation, um, we've heard from the communities on the Ferrymead side that they essentially look into the city and don't feel there's a community of interest necessarily with Littleton to the extent that the preferred model um, is, is put out. Yeah, I get that. Um, I'm working on an assumption that the Littleton Harbour communities are connected strongly, so Governors Bay, Diamond Harbour, Littleton and so on. Um, do you believe that when you take the Littleton Harbour community as a whole, that looks out to the rest of the peninsula or feels a stronger connection with the rest of the peninsula than it does with the Sumner, Mount Pleasant, Ferrymead and so on? It's kind of the same question as the community board one, isn't it? Yes, and the answer to that is the, all the Littleton Harbour communities identify more strongly with Banks Peninsula. They see themselves as Banks Peninsula people than they do than they do with those communities through the tunnel. Because you've got to remember, only a few of them access those communities through the tunnel anyway. Yeah. So if you had, I mean, many of them come in through Beckenham. Or this is the this is the, um, the, the 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 sort of kind of the other question, which is, can you really have it both ways? You're right, if you're one community, why have you got two separate community boards? Would it be would it be a fallback position then that you have a, a Banks Peninsula Community Board that that would be preferable? Yeah, that, would, that fallback position would be preferable to the alternative you're to coming over the hill. So you'd yeah. be, okay, right. But no, that's my, good. Yeah. very helpful. In response to your have a, have it both ways, the problem with having uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's not us. It's not you having it no, both no, ways. Okay. It's in terms of the argument that you put to the local government commission, yes, okay. which is we're arguing an isolated community. I'm afraid you're not that isolated from us. No, it's true. Yeah. So I'm looking for all sorts of arguments that would support a good outcome, and that might be a better outcome. That what you're saying is, is that from your perspective, it would be a better outcome. I'm not sure if. Um, Akaroa Wairiwa would agree because it's such a big job to connect with that community, with, with um, Littleton Mount Herbert. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, question. it's Paula, not straightforward. Are you really saying to us, look, altogether, Banks Peninsula is a very clear community of interest? Yes. Right. That, I think for me that nails it. Yeah. Well, well, it doesn't nail it as far as the local government well, commission goes, that's key, that's, because that's, that's not the only thing that drives no, them, it's and it's well outside the 10% range. That's so, right, but it's a key parameter. Yeah. I am trying to be helpful, despite the appearances to the contrary. So. All right. Thank you, Thank you very much, Paula. And last but certainly...